The first one uh, is from Somaliland, uh, Dr. Adener, Adan Ismail. Uh, uh, let me introduce the uh, doctor. Uh, Dr. Adener, uh, Adana Ismail is an influential Africa woman with a long career in the field of health and the champion the right of women. Trained as a nurse midwife in Britain and appointed by WHO in 1965, but took leave in 1967 when her husband became prime minister and served her country as a first lady. In 1976, she became director of the Ministry of Health, pioneering the campaign for women's health and the first against FGM. And most importantly, with uh, Somaliland's health care destroyed by Somalia, uh, Edna founded the Edna Adan Hospital which is a major referral teaching hospital. And uh, in 2002 to 2003, Adana was appointed a Somaliland Minister of Social Affairs. And uh, further, from 2003 to 2006, uh, she was her country's foreign minister. And uh, Adana received various awards, uh, including also was nominated for Nobel Peace Prize. The topic uh, Dr. Adana will uh, explain, will present uh, is the Republic of Somaliland's nation building, I think, because I, I look at the overview, <laughs> the, the PPT before, uh, and I think this is about the Republic of Somaliland's nation building and the healthcare development. So let us welcome uh, Dr. Adana, please welcome. Please. In my country, and there is a map just to show you where my country is. Next. This is uh, when my husband was prime minister, and this is in the White House in Washington. Next, we will go very quickly through the pictures. This is also in the White House with President Johnson. Next, then there was war. That is when health care was destroyed. Next, war brings destruction. Next, destruction brings death. This is, these are mass graves where innocent victims were put into mass graves. Women, children, old, whatever. Next. And that is, of course, brings the result of there's no health care, there's no water, there's no sanitation, there's no immunization, there is no, no jobs. Everything stops. People run away, go and fight for their lives and seek protection. Next. And of course, if there is any little going, women are always last in the queue. Whatever there is, if there are jobs, women don't get it, men get it first. If there is any opportunity, women are never there. They're never represented. They have no decision-making uh, opportunities. They are not counted. Next. Of course, maternal mortality rises. This is the the biggest barometer that will show you the situation of health of any nation. Maternal mortality rate tells you how good or how bad health care is. And of course, what is bad for women is also bad for children. Women die, their children also die. Next, please. This is the situation of hospital that was left by Somalia. How can people care for sick people in a dirty, infested, infected environment like that? And that is what made me 
very hurt that I was working in the, with the United Nations. I had great positions and my people were living under such conditions. So I decided I would go home, I would build a hospital, and I will show the world and my people what you can do with your determination. Next. And next, please. So I started building the hospital. Next, next, and next. The hospital was opened on a site where Somalia used to kill innocent victims. This is now the Edna Hospital. Next. But it is not a hospital. It's not the building that looks after the sick. It's the skills of the health professionals, the doctors. There were only 17 doctors in my country. My country has 4 million population. No trained nurses, no laboratory, no pharmacy, no surgeons. This made me decide to train autocracy. Next week. I'm hearing sound, but I'm not sure if you're hearing it too. And I've lost the picture. Um, next, I, I can see the picture. I'm sorry, can you see me? Can you see? Okay. I cannot see the screen, I cannot see the slide, but just continue going and I will speak in, in, the, in the dark. I cannot see it. Can you, can you listen? Can you, can you listen I to you first? Yes. yes? Ah, now you have to come back. Thank you. Okay, please, please go okay. ahead. <clears throat> so, uh, when the hospital was opened, I decided that the best thing I could do is to train nurses. The picture has gone again. But let's continue. Next, please. This was the first nurses we trained. Next, next, next. We have now delivered 27,000 women. Unfortunately, we have lost 72 women. This makes our maternal mortality rate 261 per 100,000 live births. It is a very high number when you compare it to developed countries. But before the hospital was built, the maternal mortality of the Somali women was 1,600 per 100 thousand live births. So we are now maybe one quarter, one fifth of what the previous maternal mortality rate was. But 261 women to die 
of eclampsia is too much, of infection is too much, of obstructed labor is too much, of postpartum hemorrhage is too much, because these are conditions that science has found a solution to control. But when people are poor, when people have not had an education, when the system of health has been destroyed, people die and women die and their children die. After we train nurses, next, next, please. And next, just go to the pictures, please. Today, we have medical schools, nursing schools. We have trained our own anesthesia technicians. We had no anesthesia technicians in the, in the entire country. Today, every regional hospital has an anesthesia machine and has a trained technician and has a surgeon who has at least had one year of training in obstetrics and gynecology. But, they are participants. Healthcare is not only maternity care. There are other sick people who need to be looked after. There are old, young women, men who have accidents, who have illness. Next, please. But today we have women, next. Today we have a hospital where men and women and people, sick people are, tr are treated. And we also have women for the first time in my country. We have women surgeons, women pediatricians, women obstetricians, women anesthetists, women lab technicians. And in my university, where we have 1,500 students, 70% of the students are female. I am proud and I am grateful to God that we have moved our country from a place of death to a place where men and women are holding hands to save the population. But, dear participants, 260 maternal mortality rate per 100,000 still tells us that we are far from success. We have made great improvements, yes. We have made great strides, yes. But there is still a long road to go to achieve improved healthcare for our people. Now, what do we do? Somaliland is one of the poorest countries in the world. Somaliland is one of the countries with the smallest literacy rate, even though it is improving now. But Somaliland has determination to work for the people and we need partners, not to give us money, but to give us knowledge, 
to show us how to improve things, how to look after the sick better, how to improve what we are doing. If we are doing it well, to do it even better. We need to make academic strides in research, in epidemiology. We need to have quality control and we need to have partnerships. We need to share with the world the achievements that Somaliland has made under very difficult circumstances. And we need to learn from others how they too have overcome their problems. Next, please. Next. Next. We need to fight traditional practices, harmful traditional practices. Our tradition is rich and we should preserve it when our traditions are good. But when our traditions are bad, like female circumcision and like burning this child you have on the screen is a child that was born with hydrocephalus and instead of taking this child to the hospital they burnt it because they believe they can burn the disease out. They have caused this child even more pain and suffering. So we need to fight ignorance. We need to build confidence in our people to come and seek health care. We need to provide affordable health care so that the poor, the neglected, the one living in a distant location will have access to affordable and efficient, appropriate health care. Otherwise, our people will suffer the consequences of harmful traditions like this poor child has. Next, please. Again, next. Next. We have, because of poverty, because of malnutrition, because of deficiencies in the diet of the people, there is a high incidence of congenital malformations and complications. We see a, a, a very high number of spina bifidus, of hydrocephalus, problems associated with folic acid deficiency. When people are poor, this is what happens. When people are ignorant, this is what happens. We need to help our community in a reasonable, equitable, efficient way to prevent the preventable diseases and complications. We cannot protect somebody from getting hit by lightning strike, a strike of lightning. But we can protect our women and our children from folic acid deficiency, iron deficiency. I'd be happy to answer any questions that the audience may have. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Eden. Uh, I think uh, your presentation is very inspiring 
and then telling. I think uh, you you make uh, a greater effort and the contribution to the establishment of the healthcare uh, in Somaliland, in your country, especially uh, you, you save a lot of uh, people, especially women and the children's lives. So uh, I think uh, I agree with you uh, fully that the best way that stakeholder uh, can contribute in an inclusive partnership would be to help Somaliland rebuild its education at all level and help us rebuild our basic health service by helping us with postgraduate education for our health worker. So thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you. And, and Mr. Chairman, if I may also add that I fully support yes. the, um, um, the, the, the focus that was presented uh, by Taiwan, the conference um, suggestions. I fully support it. Thank you.